If you're trying to learn how to do optimization questions in calculus, then you have come to the right place. After this video, I guarantee that you feel very confident with optimization questions. And I will also post a link in the description box below to my other video where I go over the most common types of optimization questions so that when you go into your test, you will most likely recognize a few questions. Ready? Let's optimize. What? Optimization questions are basically word problems where your answers are always going to be maximum or minimum values. That might sound weird because you're thinking, how does maximum or minimum values tie in with word problems? Well, let's take a look at it graphically. All minimum and maximum values share one thing in common and that their slopes are zero, which means in calculus talks, their first derivative is zero. So if you can find the coordinates of your minimum or maximum values, that will give you the answer to your optimization questions. The first step in doing optimization questions is to determine your main equation. And this depends on what we're trying to maximize or minimize. It could be the area in which the equation becomes area is length times width. You could be maximizing or minimizing the perimeter, or you could be minimizing or maximizing the distance, volume, and so forth. Once you have your main equation, you have to find a secondary equation, and that's usually the trickiest part. Why do we need a secondary equation? Well, because our main equation has two variables, but we can't derive two variables. So they have to give us some other information that relates one variable to the other. And then we can isolate for one of the variables and then substitute it into itself in the main equation so that we can do calculus afterwards. Once we've substituted the secondary equation into the main equation, the next step would be to simplify and derive the main equation after which we set the derivative to zero and solve for the variable. And finally, we can plug the variable back into the secondary equation to solve for the other variable. Let's do an example. What is the smallest product of two numbers when one number is seven greater than the other number? Right off the bat, the word smallest product means that we're looking for a minimum, not that it really matters, but we also now know the main equation has to deal with the word product. Product is any two numbers multiplying each other. So P equals X and Y, where X is the first number, let's say, and Y could be the second number. Once we know this, we need our secondary equation. They have to give us a relationship. And there it is. One number is seven greater than the other number. So for our secondary equation, we can say that X is Y plus seven. And now we can substitute the Y plus seven into the X in the main equation. So now our main equation looks like this and we can distribute the y in to simplify a little bit. And now we can do some calculus. We do the power rule to get p prime is 2y plus 7. And then we set the derivative or p prime as 0. So now it's 0 equals 2y plus 7. And we can solve for y pretty easily as negative 3.5. Once we know the y, we still have to find the x. Remember our secondary equation. We can plug the negative 3.5 into the y and solve for x, which is 3.5. So now we know that the first number is 3.5 and the second number is negative 3.5, which means the minimum product is negative 12.25. Let's take a look at another example. A farmer wants to build a rectangular pig pen using 400 feet of fencing. The pig pen will be built along a river. The river acts as one of the sides of the pen. What dimensions should the pig pen be so that it will have the largest possible area? The largest possible area tells us right away that we're looking for a maximum, not that it matters, but we're looking for area. So our main equation has to be area is length times width. We're not a big fan of L and W's. Let's keep it as X and Y. So let's set the length as X and the width as Y. So our main equation now looks like area is equal to X times Y. What about the secondary equation? Let's do a diagram here. We have a river and we got the fence. Let's say that the sides are X's and bottom side is the Y. And they tell us that there is 400 feet of fencing, which means the sum of the X's and Y altogether should equal 400. Now we can simplify, isolate for the Y and substitute it into the Y of our main equation, making our main equation look like this. We can distribute the X into the brackets to simplify. And now we can do calculus. We can derive it to get a prime. And then we set a prime to zero always solve for X, which is a hundred. Once we know X is a hundred, we can plug it back into the secondary equation and get Y is equal to 200. So now we know the dimension will be 100 by 200. One final note. I said that optimization is either finding the maximum or the minimum, but you will never have to make that choice in a question. If the question is asking for the maximum area, well, your answer will give the maximum area. It will never give a minimum. 
so you don't have to wonder, hmm, is my answer a maximum or a minimum? Don't worry, just do the steps and your answer will be whatever the question wants it to be.